G'day folks, uh, welcome to a little Monday afternoon, got a bit going on at the moment so I'm going to crack into this UPS that I, uh, I'm going to give to one of my subscribers, I want to put an internal battery and everything in it, uh, make sure it's safe to go, um, not sure about transporting it, that's my only concern is if I fit it up I've got to make sure it won't turn on at all, now these don't have neither the little one here nor that one have a uh, transport disconnect. It's got a mains inline fuse in the socket, but that's about it. So, the problem is making sure it doesn't come online while it's in transport. It doesn't get jarred or anything. And I then half a mind just to leave the battery disconnected, but the thing is, if you're delivering it to a customer, I, haven't, I don't know if my customer even has a lot of experience in mains power and stuff. It's something I'm gonna ask him. If he sees this video first or not, I'm just going to ask whether or not we've got the experience to work around high voltage safely. But, yeah, where do you go from here? Do you leave it open and with the battery detached so he can just plug it in and if it suddenly comes online, like the button in here gets depressed while he's pulling the cover out and it comes online while he's plugging it in, then you've got live components on the main board which could possibly kill you. So, I don't know, it's sort of like sending someone an extension cord and a microwave transformer and saying, here, have some fun. Yeah, where does the liability end? And unfortunately these days it is sort of about duty of care, which is something that Photonic Induction brought up before he, uh, or just after he terminated his original channel. His experiments would be going, just going beyond dangerous in some places, and he decided to edit and modify everything and re-upload them to Photon vids and you'll see there's disclaimers on everything and I think some of the more dangerous stuff is actually removed or is not going to re-upload so yeah good on him for that one and uh, yeah likewise if you see me doing something crazy like burning shit with a microwave transformer don't try it at home I won't respond to people just asking me how to hook up a microwave transformer just for fun uh, I get that quite a lot and it's a liability particularly when these the person asking has no experience with transformers, doesn't know a primary from a secondary, all that sort of stuff. That's something I've been meaning to do a full video on. But I'm not going to show you how to fix, fix up or set up a microwave transformer. I'm just going to ramble on about how dangerous it is to just jump into it from the deep end. That's basically what you're doing. You go instead of it's sort of like dealing with guns. You teach a kid how to shoot with an air rifle, then a 22, then a 223, and so on. You don't just give him an AK-47 and say, "Here you go, learn how to shoot this." Uh, there have been a number of tragedies on shooting ranges from kids getting handed overpowered automatic weapons for the first time and it ends up riding up under their chin and blowing their head off before their parent even knows what's going on. Uh, same deal with microwave transformers. They will kill you very quickly. Electricity can trace through elements which you may think are otherwise non-conductive and it'll bite you. You generally rarely live from it. So that's sort of my point today. You've got to be careful with what you do and don't be mad if I don't respond to you or I say that you or I question whether or not you're capable of handling such stuff because yeah you're basically handling something far more dangerous than a beginner's project like a flyback transformer either way I've got plenty of equipment autopsies and things to play with fry do whatever working but scratched LCD monitor I'm gonna power up the backlight and everything and then start feeding 24 volts or something into this control ribbon see what it does CD changer out of a Chrysler Voyager Plymouth Voyager um, there's probably not much inside these things yeah not even a CD magazine so there's really nothing in there but we'll pull it to bits as an autopsy waterlogged flood damaged Dell laptop uh, might be able to get some reasonable bits out of it but I doubt it it had water dripping out of it last I checked so that one can definitely go to hell. <laughs> yeah, something horribly wrong with that LCD too. It's all bubbly. Might even be radiant heat damage. Yeah. I don't know. Nothing else has melted. Yeah, who knows? Oh, that or someone got pissed off with it and just took a heat gun to it because all the outer layers bubbled off. And yeah, Brad donated some stuff. My dad went up to see him. Uh, was it yesterday? He's buying a uh, diesel high ace van through Brad, so he went up there and Brad gave him all this stuff to bring back, along with a uh, deckmate 
computer, DEC, Digital Electronics Corporation or whatever it is. Uh, very old, like an early 80s um, Zilog Z80 based PC. So we'll get cracking to that one later on in the week. For now I just want to get this UPS sorted out and we'll also break into some of these autopsies. I think that's out of the Range Rover I had. I believe so, it sort of feels the same, a little bit grindy. Um, that's off the uh, Holden 304, 305, whatever he bought. Uh, it's completely locked up. It's an early sand and scroll compressor. There's a lot of aluminum paste type stuff coming out the discharge line, so that compressor's had a hard life. That alternator should work. Uh, it's part of a um, window or windscreen wiper motor. The stator or the magnetic ha magnet housing's missing, so I can't really do much with that. Water pump, there's nothing to them. You never really get the impeller off anyway, they're pressed together. And that rather shiny Mercedes-Benz alternator by the looks of it. Very shiny. Seems to have a one-way clutch on the pulley too, which is odd. Never seen that before. But it looks very shiny. I'm best guessing the problems in there in the rectifier. Probably blown the rectifier diodes to pieces or the regulator. Because they're internally rectified and regulated. Either way, the equipment autopsies. Oh, and that's the receiver dryer for that one, so that should have a lot of silver paste in it too. Anywho, that's about all for now. I'm going to get into this one. If I come up with anything interesting, I'll post a separate video on it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more fun.